So what I've got here is a <clears throat> Beckman FC-130 frequency counter that I purchased a while back. Actually, I purchased a lot of four of them off of eBay for repair. And I've repaired all these now, and three of the four I'm going to sell. I, I wanted one that didn't actually have a dedicated frequency counter. So I basically I kept the one that was the nicest visually, which they're all in really nice shape visually, but this one here didn't have any scratches at all that I could see, so I kept it. And I'm going to list the other three on eBay. Now, one problem with these is they're not really a laboratory instrument. They're more of a service instrument. And they don't have an oven-controlled reference oscillator. Um, gener basically, all that they have is a 10 megahertz crystal with a, a oscillator circuit around it. I haven't studied it close enough to tell what how how they did it, whether it's a which type of crystal oscillator circuit it is. But it's definitely sensitive to temperature. So if I use my my uh, frequency standard right now, turn this. I just I just turned this thing on less than five minutes ago, and I've had this on for an hour to have it totally stabilized. But if I happen to connect this up now, it's going to show quite a few counts off. I think it's going to be like 10 megahertz, and then like 85 at the end that's generally what it has been and then an hour later it slowly goes back in to where it comes right out to 10 megahertz with maybe a one I mean sometimes flashing to zero so let me demonstrate that for you right here of course the first the first counts always off what I usually do is I'll they tell you 12 o'clock is the perfect trigger level for this, and you'll find that's the case, but I usually set it manually anyways. The closer you can get to the perfect trigger level on that, the more accurate the system is there. Now it just triggers. Of course, that number's garbage at first because it's halfway through the gate time. And then there you see 10.0075 at the end. If I leave this on for an hour, this number slowly decreases until it comes right out to 10 with a 1 at the end, and then sometimes that'll flash to 0. But on the bottom, there is a uh, small uh, trim cap that you adjust to get this number perfectly in. Now, what I, what I want to try to do is, this has a ceramic capacitor in there in parallel with that trim cap and I, I'm not sure if it's an NPO or a COG ceramic but I'd like to try something maybe even more stable to see, see if you see that as time goes on that counts dropping to see if I can get something a little bit more stable so that when this thing powers up maybe I can um, use it say within 10 or 15 minutes rather than within an hour so I dug around and I found a polycarbonate capacitor that I had in one of these assortments that I got from Electronics Gold Mine a while back. And I just happened to have a 33 peaker farad, which is about the same as what that ceramic one is. And as you can see, it's 32.9 right on the dot at 1 kilohertz. 10 kilohertz, it's right there. 100 kilohertz it's still right there so I think this may be the capacitor to use on this and hopefully within say maybe 10 or 15 minutes I can use this frequency counter instead of within an hour so I'm gonna shut this camera off and I'm gonna open the top off here and I'll show you what's inside there well, I've got this FC 130 disassembled and you can kind of see the layout of things. It's kind of a nice, neat layout. It's pretty well shielded. You've got the shielding on both sides, and it's all tied in, grounded, and the whole works. <clears throat> and right about there is where that capacitor is. I pulled it out, and then there's the reference crystal. And you can see it's just all open and exposed. It's not ovenized. And on the back of this thing, let me get 
this flip over is the little trimmer. They put it on the back so that there's access through that hole right there to adjust it without pulling the thing apart. But um, one of the one of the three that I had to one of the four that I purchased in this four lot set, that particular trimmer was broken. That's why it was it was way out of calibrated. I couldn't get it to do anything. And I ended up having to replace it with one that was too big. I had to actually mount it right in there on the top side so there isn't any access from underneath anymore. Once it, if you have to adjust that one you have to pull the top off. But I think what they did here is they have like a, a crude ovenization with this heat sink right here. I think that heat sink, I'm not sure, but I think that's a pass transistor for the uh, 723 that's down there, the voltage regulator chip. But this happens to be right beside the crystal in this whole circuit, and this heat sink gets really hot. And when this thing's all together and you lay your hand on the case in this area, it gets really hot. So I don't know whether it was engineered that way or whether just essentially by accident, which I doubt it, it was probably engineered that way, this thing has a crude ovenization with this heat sink. And over a span of an hour, apparently the temperature will um, stabilize in here and your reading on the frequency counter stabilizes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to solder in that polycarbonate capacitor and just kind of curious to see what happens here if it makes it any more stable or less stable or whatever. So I'll be back once that's done. So just real quick here to show you I got that soldered in. Um, had to kind of angle it up a little bit so that uh, it's a little bit wider than what the ceramic one was so it didn't short against the case of the crystal. So I'm going to put this cover back on and give it a try and see how we'll see what we got. Okay, I've got this all back together, so let's see what we've got here. This unit's completely cold. I haven't had it fired up or anything, so other than the, I've had the frequency reference on. So let's see what we get. The first number we get will be garbage because it starts right in the middle of the gate time. And then the second gate time will be the actual number. So you know, that's already pretty doggone close to 10 megahertz right there. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to unplug this and put it over my other workbench because I have other things I want to do here. Um, I'm going to leave this powered up for an hour and see where our number ends up. We know right now at initial fire up we're at 998. So I'll shut this off and unplug it. And then an hour from now we'll see what that number ends up as. Well, it's been a little over an hour now, and it's obvious that that um, capacitor made no difference. So, apparently the actual crystal itself is what's a temperature-dependent um, component, which I kind of figured it was, but thought it was worth a try. Um, no doubt about it, this case gets really hot, so I think that's almost, they're almost trying to do a... Uh, kind of a um, crude ovenizing of it with that big heat sink and it's stabilized at about 16 sometimes it goes down to 15 for about the past 20 minutes or so but um, I guess what I'm going to do now I'm going to do it on camera I'll just adjust that up to 10 megahertz at this point here and then I'll leave it go for another hour and see how uh, stable it is. Maybe I'll film it after that after that last hour and I'll be the last installment of this. But that obviously the the uh, temperature dependent factor in this is the crystal, so not the capacitor. But hey, it was worth a try, anyways. Well, it's about an hour later. Um, I adjusted this to ten and zero and all zeros after and. It's fluctuating between, sometimes it'll go up to a 2, sometimes it'll drop down to a 99, but it's pretty pretty stable, more or less. So, this is pretty pretty decent frequency counter overall, and really, most frequency counters, you have to leave them run for a long time to get their correct accuracy anyways. I was just hoping to maybe 
quicken the process a little bit with the polystyrene as compared to the um, ceramic capacitor, but that's just not going to happen. So just leave it run for a couple hours and then use it, I guess.